Hi, everyone. Welcome. My name is Holly Broman, and I'm the Children's Librarian at the Central Library. Thanks for joining us for Nurturing Know How. We're really excited to have Nydia with us today to talk about how to use yoga with young children. And, um, you know, as you may know, Nurturing Know How is really geared for caregivers and family members who work regularly with the little ones. And so we're really excited to join together to talk a little bit about how we can do yoga with them. Um, so Nydia, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I have been practicing yoga for many, many years, probably since the 70s. And I did my yoga training in 2004 in uh, uh, Costa Rica, NOSA Institute, and I began to practice um, an arbor as a yoga teacher for the public schools, and they develop programs. Uh, almost every single uh, school district has uh, class for yoga in the in the afternoons, right after school. So that was very exciting, and it was a very rewarding type of experience. I also have uh, experience with the cognitive impaired uh, population in Ann Arbor too. And I did a lot of private uh, lessons in Ann Arbor, Michigan, in Birmingham, and here in Santa Barbara. That's pretty much what I have done in the yoga field. Well, thanks for sharing your expertise with us. So I'm gonna move to the next slide. And tell us about what yoga is. Well, yoga is a very ancient science that joins pretty much body, mind, and breath. And it helps children to improve their neural uh, emotional development. It helps their attention span. It helps them with their postures. It helps uh, with concentration. It improves their balance too and their posture. So it's really a very good experience for even young children because they can jump into a game, into a very easy situation. They don't feel threatened, they don't feel scared, and they join the flow and they begin to socialize and begin to play games with the poses. So it's very, very rewarding in every, every sense of the word. I forgot to mention that I did a yoga uh, experience in the slums of, Colum of Colombia, and that was also very eye-opening for me because I learned a lot that I was not exposed in this culture. So I will share some of those experiences at the end with you. We can begin, I have chosen 12 basic poses that are very easy for children and they can pretty much follow a trend because the poses are pretty much in a sequ sequential type of uh, situation. So we're going to start with the basic pose that is called the mountain pose, the first one. Yeah, this pose is the very basic, uh, the foundation for the standing poses. And as you see, it's very easy for a child to just do this pose. So you just instruct them to sit straight, to stand up straight, put their arms close to their body and keep the feet about hip width uh, apart. Always I have instructed them to look forward to a non-moving point and begin to breathe through the nose. Many children come trained to breathe through the, through the mouth and it's something that you have to teach them because they breathing through the nose relaxes the neuro, neuro system. It's not like the uh, alert that we practice when we run or when we jog. So this is a very 
suiting pose, and you can use this pose in between the different poses that we're gonna see. Children enjoy this pose, they feel very centered, and it helps to begin to concentrate on their, their own bodies, their own balance, their grounding on the floor, and also begin to become more aware of their legs and their arms and their neck and their head. So you will pretty much follow through the whole body instructing them that your head is looking towards the, towards the sky, your shoulders are shrugged towards the back, you're opening the chest, you have a good posture, your legs are very strong, your feet are very grounded. So you pretty much describe the strong pose and prepare them for the next one. This is a fun pose and they enjoy this pose a lot. It's called the star pose. We used to call them the five point star. And you, from the previous pose, you ask them to just hop, open their legs, open their arms, lift their head, and again, fix the side in a non-moving point ahead of them. This is a pose that they enjoy because it's very easy and it's fun. And they can do it, for instance, in a circle and begin to introduce the idea of a playfulness so yoga will not be presented as a very serious type of situation or very, very rigid. So they can pretty much play with this pose. As you can see, the little child has the palms towards the the floor. Sometimes they can do just the opposite, put their palms up and they can modify their own pose at their will. You cannot ask them to stay in this pose for too long because the arms are going to get very fatigued. So you have to be very conscious that the child is doing this for fun, not as a duty. <laughs> so you can pretty much put them in a circle and they can help each other by keeping the arms close to each other and try to keep the, the balance and the fun part of the, of the pose. From this pose, they can go back to the mountain pose. So that's the very first one that we did. So you can begin to introduce the idea of a game or play, because children love to play. They are not going to go to a yoga class if they don't have it fun. So we can go to the next one. Mm, yeah, I have a quick question. Is, is it um, a game to go back and forth while holding hands from mountain to star? Is that the game? How does the game no. work? No, no, no. They, from, the, from the standing poses, you go to the star pose. And in the star pose, they can move their arms if they want to, to play in a circle type of situation. Okay, you have to invent things along the way. <laughs> this is the called the airplane. You begin on mountain pose again, and you can ask the child to imagine that they are an airplane and they are opening the wings. As you can see, she's opening the wings. And then you have to instruct them to stand on one leg with the other leg on the floor because children do not have a lot of good balance and you don't want anybody falling right at the beginning of your of your uh, presentation so the leg that she has up usually i allow them to keep them on the floor until they feel confident enough to be able to put it higher also if they want to use the wall it's perfectly fine they can go to the wall and balance themselves out on the wall and this airplane also was done in a circle and they used to help each other with the arms trying to keep the, the balance this pose is of course excellent for balance after they accomplish some of the basics it stretches the arms as you see she's opening the chest too and the eyesight is at a fixed point because that helps a lot 
with keeping uh, the balance. You can alter. You have to alternate. I'll then ask them to do the right leg first because most of the children use the right hand. Or later on, after they go to a mountain pose, you can ask them to go to the left leg and lift the right leg. So it's always a good idea to help them to use the right and the left to the whole to the whole class. We have another one. Okay, this is the most uh, probably challenging pose from all the ones that we have here. And there are three versions. As you see, this child is a little bit older, but still you have to be sure that you don't set them up for failure with the balance because most children don't have very good balance development. So the first version, as you see, you just ask the child to put the foot close to their to their uh, to their ankle and try to balance there. This is a very easy uh, move, and they don't get frustrated. The second version, I would say, probably is more appropriate for a teenager that has better control of their balance and their legs and arms so this is a version that is done in i would say in adult yoga classes but most teenagers can master this and the last one is the, the tree the branches are going up and the leg is higher they can also use the wall so they won't get frustrated and they can use help each other. I used to have a little game that was called the forest. So when they were able to master a little tree, it didn't matter what kind of tree, they will stay in a forest and they will see for how long the forest will stay. So sometimes they will bounce into each other or they will use the wall. So you will see a lot of different variations. But again, you have to be always very supportive of the child's pose because they are doing their best to understand their bodies. And they are just beginning to develop balance and awareness of their own self. So it's, it's a nice pose, but I would say it's probably better for older children. The little ones don't seem to be very interested unless they have to use the wall. It helps with balance, helps with concentration, and to some extent, we give them the challenge of trying a new pose that is not that they never have done before. So it's good for them to be exposed to something that is is new for them, and especially in the balance department challenge. As I told you, this is a lot better for older children. I would say from early teens to teenagers, the little ones will get very frustrated unless they use the wall. This one is suppose and they love. The only precaution that I had for this type of uh, pose is that children will try to do anything you show them. And they will never tell you that they have been hurt or they had a broken elbow or a broken wrist or a broken arm. So as a, as a caregiver, you have to be sure that the child has not had any injuries so you can present this pose. It's a table pose, so they go on their fours. They can open their fingers. The feet are pretty much close to each other. And the back should be really straight. We had another game with this. We, I used to bring uh, paper plates to be sure that that table could hold a plate. So the children will go around checking their friends' backs and putting the paper plates on the back. So it was a nice experience for them because they were 
very successful. This post was easy and they could manage. They didn't have to deal with balance or any complications with the legs or, or arms. And also the sight, you can see the child is looking forward, always should be looking forward. We also always have to have uh, a non-moving target in front of them. So that will help them with concentration. And also the instruction of helping them to breathe is crucial because they forget to breathe, they get excited. And you have to remind them, come back to your breath, breathe through your nose. We're gonna count five breaths, six breaths, just breathe and relax. And in, the, in that way, you're presenting the idea that the breathing helps them to relax. The breathing helps them to pay at better attention to whatever they're doing. And it becomes part of their routine. They learn to breathe through the yoga and they learn to relax when they need it. Here, you don't really have to worry about balance at all, but you have to worry, as I told you about the <laughs> From the previous pose, you can go to the down dog. You can have to stroke the child to stretch the legs, stretch the arms, and try to lift the hips as much as they can. Again, putting the heels on the ground is not very realistic at the very beginning. So you just have to modify the pose so the child will not be frustrated. This pose will strengthen the arms, strengthen the legs, will stretch out the back part of the legs, and is very helpful for the children that spend so much time at the desk. They have very dense muscles. So they enjoy this pose. You have to also tell them just to let the head hang because they tend to shrug their, their heads and their shoulders. And this is another pose that you can use if you feel comfortable or if you have more than two children that can do this pose, they can go under the the down dog and they enjoy the, the experience and usually they try very hard to keep the pose still so the little ones can go on the, this was one of their favorite games and they had in an arbor it's very beneficial for stretching arms stretching as i told you the feet stretching the back part of the legs is very good for the back too. Can go to the next one. This is another one that they can do uh, from the table that we did at the beginning. Um, if you have cats, you know what a happy cat is. So you can instruct the child just to curve their back and inhale, and on the inhale, lift the head. So that way there's some, when they do that, that way there's a curve on the back. And that's pretty much the happy cat. They can make sounds of a happy cat, and they can also begin to work on the scare cat. Then you have to instruct them to look at their bellies and curve their backs. And they can alternate doing the happy cut with the inhale and the scared cut with the exhale. So that's another pose that they enjoy doing and it's very easy for them. They begin to concentrate on the breathing and the movement and begin to get more uh, body awareness because many children come to a yoga class and they have a hard time knowing the right from the left. So this is very, very useful. As you see, the hands are parallel, parallel to each other. The feet are in different positions. So you cannot be extremely compulsive about the 
alignment of the pose. Just allow them to enjoy it and do the best with the breath and the pose. This is a little bit uh, challenging for younger children. They very seldom have success doing this. To ask them to go from their bellies and try to lift their bodies with their arms. This doesn't happen in the, with the little ones, only with early teenagers and have stronger arms. And the arms are tucked in, the elbows are tucked in, the hands, as you see, are well placed under the shoulders, and the rest of the body is lifted. This, as I told you, doesn't happen in the little ones, so you have to modify the pose, and if they just want to do it on the, on the floor, allow them. This is a teenager, so she has better awareness. As you can see, this child has been instructed to look at the Non moving point, she's probably engaging with the breathing in and out, nose, and concentrated on the different parts of the body. This, as you can tell, strengthens the arms, stretches the legs, the feet, and eventually, when they're able to do this pose, it's a very engaging type of pose. They love to do it and they like to show off to their friends and they can lift their body off the, off the floor. So it's more for uh, older children. With the little ones, you just have to modify this and allow them to do whatever they can do that is similar to this pose. The breathing has to be emphasized in every single pose because they just forget to breathe or they get too excited and distracted. So it's always a good idea to remind them to breathe at least two, three, four times and help them even counting the type of, uh, the number of breaths that they have to take during the pose. So counting the, the breaths as they take them is a good way for, for motivating. Right. And they, they keep it, they keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you don't remember if you don't remind them, they don't they never remember. <laughs> yeah. They're more interested in the body part. And the breathing is something very new for them. Yeah. Um, I did have a question come in. So I think this might be a good time to ask is after the sessions, is there any time spent asking the children how it made them feel and what they experienced? And if so, what are the answers like? What do you mean at the, at the end of the class? Yeah, after you um, do a yoga with children and do you ask them how it made them feel and what they experienced and what are their answers like? Well, as a routine, what you do is the relaxation. You do the relaxation so they can put themselves together and be able to control the relaxation technique with their own breath. After they have finished the relaxation, I will probably welcome questions and they have comments, but I will really encourage the caregivers to be able to allow them the free time to to breathe and, and relax. Yeah. So what is the typical emotions of the child when they're done with the session of yoga, you think? This was so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the children complain that because they don't have still uh, good body awareness. So for them, it's really challenging to organize their bodies. So they see the pose, you demonstrate the pose, they do the best they can. And still they can get uh, sometimes very, very, not upset, but very frustrated because they don't find the right from the left. And this is it's, it's difficult. At the beginning, after they master it, 
is is really a lot of fun. Yeah, down the road it's more fun once they've mastered yeah, sure, it. Sure. I I remember you told me in another session that that there was um a child that when they got older they came back to you and said that a lot of the like focusing techniques and breathing techniques that you had taught really came in handy later. Do you want to talk about that at all? Oh, that's a very interesting experience because that was done in the in the slums. Uh, these children at the end of the class were given the relaxa- relaxation technique with the breathing techniques. Okay? And this particular little girl took every single class that I taught. I was teaching four classes a day, two in the morning, two in the afternoon. She came to every single class. And l- later I learned that she was a fencing uh, student and through the community center they have fencing classes and she was very interested in because she had to compete so she would come and if she had free time with me she would ask me how do I handle my fear and I say well go back to your breath relax and you will be able to master it well I think I told you that my classmates from high school that were the ones who organized this yoga camp in the slums told me that she became extremely successful. She became national champion of Betsy. And she used to tell my friends that she never forgot the classes that she had because she learned how to breathe and she learned how to control her fears. So that was my highlight story because you really see them at work and she became a very successful person it's a big jump and this post children love it and it's very easy is the half bow so you just instruct them to stretch the left arm and stretch the left leg and that's the half bow. And then with the right hand, they have to grab the right ankle. This is very good for opening the chest and for the children and stay at the desk and punch all day long is very helpful. They create uh, different poses with these two. When you do the right, you have to do the left. So you alternate the two sides. And the full bow is trying to get both feet uh, together. And this was one of the surprises that I had, because I never thought they were going to do that. They decided to do a rocking horse. So from this pose, they kept on going to the chest, to the legs. And it was really a fun way to see how they began to to play with the pose and and have fun with it, with the full bow. So as you see, the head is pretty much straight away from the body and they have very strong hold of their feet in order to do the full bow on the rocking horse. The breathing has to be emphasized on this one too. As you see this little girl, notice them, she had, mouth is open, so probably she's not concentrating on her breathing, she's just having fun with the pose. And that's something else and you have to learn to let go. You cannot be so strict getting, trying to get them do a perfect pose that doesn't work for children. They just have to do the best they can, close to the best pose and let them enjoy and have fun with it. This is a pose and they enjoy because it's easy. The instruction is to, from standing up, open the legs wide and just squat down, put the hands in front of them. And as you can see, I think I told you uh, before, the hands of this little girl are not symmetrical. So she's doing the best she can to balance. This frog pose is a pose that they enjoy doing 
they like to hop around the room, making noises, making different uh, rivety, rivety, uh sounds. And it's supposed and will help them uh, to open their hips, to make their legs uh, more limber. And to some extent, they can play with the pose to make it a balanced pose if they put their hands in, in, into their chest. But it's a pose that the little ones can do with no trouble and they enjoy doing it. And it's a pose that the older kids also enjoy and they can manage to have fun with this pose. It's, uh, when you teach children and you are in a group, you have to pretty much understand where they are coming from. And if they want to be all frogs hopping around the room, let them be because they're having fun and they're learning something. If they're practicing the breath, that's great. If they're learning to balance, that's wonderful. If they are having more interaction with their children, that's even better. They through many of these poses and their games, they socialize with no fears because everybody, everybody's on the same boat type of thing. So it's, it's very easy for them to, to get into the, the game of the yoga. Is there any tips that you would give for those children that are feeling a little bit shy or um, reluctant when you're doing these, because it's going to be it's going to be a fun activity. You're making it fun, but there's those children well, that might you have to fun. allow them to do what they can. Mm -hmm. You cannot force them to do something that is out of their out of their turf because they will not cooperate with you, and you have to help them and understand. The, the main goal is for them to be successful in whatever they're doing, instead of forcing them to do something that is your model, but is not their model. So if you allow that freedom, your class will go very smoothly, but they have to be allowed to be themselves. <laughs> they cannot be little, little adults, <laughs> they're just children. This is called the child pose. It's a very calm pose, very relaxing pose. It's very easy. They just have to go on their knees and put their head very softly on the floor and stretch their arms backwards. They usually close their eyes and they, you have to remind them again to breathe because this is a relaxation pose. You can use this pose every time you do the table poses sequence that we did before. You can encourage this child pose because it's very, very relaxing and they enjoy it. They don't have any difficulties whatsoever. It's, it's easy and they feel good. They can be successful and they have pretty much their own little world for a few minutes. So it's, it's a good pose to offer children, especially if you feel that they need to be calm and they need to be more uh, relaxed with the, with the class. I got a question in earlier about whether you ever play music during the yoga sessions. And it seems like if there's a pose that you might, it might be one of these relaxing ones, but at, at what point do you play music or do you? Well, I didn't, the reason why I was, I, I didn't do it was because of practical reasons. You know, I was teaching in a classroom setting. So that was not an option, but I thought that in general, music with children becomes a distraction. You have to have them paying attention to your instructions. You have to have them pretty much uh, following you. 
at all times with the pose, with the breathing. And I found that music, even for adult yoga music, that was not my my interest whatsoever. I thought that was very distracting. But some people like it. You know, so it's okay. But I think for children that will be very, very, very difficult. They have too many too many things to take care of, you know, their balance, the breathing, following your instructions, they don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so if you introduce one more factor, you lose them. At the end of the sessions, even if you only offer three or four sessions, four uh, poses for the children, always help them to rest. And this is a very nice way to show the breathing too. If they have a stuffed animal or if they bring any toy to the, to the class, just ask them to put the, that stuffed animal on their bellies and begin to practice the, the breathing. They can inflate their belly and get the little stuff animal to move in and out. And they enjoy that. They enjoy the control of their own breath. And they can see it right there and they can feel it. So it's very, very good idea to have either a breathing body or anything that they can feel that moves. You can instruct them to close their eyes and just concentrate on the breath. The palms could be covered or they can be facing the ceiling and the feet are relaxed. If you have uh, a group of children that are listening to you, you can instruct them to relax their feet, concentrate on your breath, relax your abdomen, relax your chest, relax your arms. Relax your face, and they can practice this when they get home. And the the use of the the toys is something else, and I I had to really deal with that because if you have too many toys or too many props, they get very distracted and you lose the audience. So you have to be very selective with what you allow them to use. Something that will be indeed uh, helpful and also that they're going to learn something from that particular prop. So it's, it's, a, it's a balance that you have to, to, to take, you know, when you teach children, because you never know what's going to happen with them. At this pose, they usually love it and they can stay in that pose for we say up to five minutes. And sometimes I had the families coming to pick them up and they were still doing their relaxation. And they couldn't believe it that they were able to do that in the class and not at home. <laughs> they, they enjoy it. They enjoy their time with their peers. They enjoy their time with their baby bodies. And they enjoy learning about their own, their own bodies. Their own breathing, their arms, the legs, the feet, the necks. It's a very interesting experience. You have any more questions? Yeah, I have more questions. Um, it went blank there for a second because I clicked through and it, that's the last slide. The next slide is blank. So that's all for these slides, but um, we definitely have a lot to learn from you. So after all these years of practicing yoga, you've had many different experiences with many different age groups. Um, do you have a favorite story that you'd like to share with us? Well, the story that I told you about the fencing girls of the slums, mm -hmm. that's my favorite story. That's because your very favorite. I really so big change and she was motivated and she worked hard and she made it mm -hmm. she made it out of the slums you know? 
Yeah. That, that story definitely does stand out. Oh, so, that was, yeah. I still get goosebumps when I think about her. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Um, so has there been anything like that's really challenged you teaching a yoga, yoga class? Like, have you ever had a most challenging group or most challenging child? Um, and how did you overcome that challenge? Well, in, uh, in Ann Arbor, I had a rule. I never took more than 10 children. Uh, they were pretty much comparable in age. So that was probably a good move because I never had to expel anybody and I didn't have any major difficulties with them. They came very motivated. And probably because their families also were practice, practitioners. So they brought them and they asked questions about how did she do, how was, she, how was her uh, child pose, how was her camel pose. So the parents knew the jargon. So you knew that the children were exposed. You know, and it was a lot easier, a lot easier to teach. It was fun. Mm -hmm. And you said earlier that when it comes to children who are a little bit more reserved about it, to just let them chime in and join in when they feel comfortable. Sure. Is or allow them to do the poses that they, they're able to do. Mm -hmm. Because they have to be successful. You cannot push it. Right. Just learn on your own. So for the caregivers who are interested in doing yoga with their child, but perhaps they've had an injury recently or they're not as flexible as they once were. Do you have any tips for doing encouraging poses that you can't quite do or doing modifications? when you have a bad back or something? Well, you have to do what you're comfortable with. You know, if you only can do a table pose and a child pose, mm -hmm. that should be fine. I don't think that dolls have to model for the children. You show them the pose the best you can, but I don't think that, you know, if you have major issues, you should go to pain and aches, you know, to try to make the child happy. That's not going to make the child happy. It's going to make you unhappy and <laughs> the child gets a bad example. So you have to be very honest with the children and just show them what you can do. You know, if you only can do a table pose or a child pose, begin with that. And later on, use the wall and get the children to balance. Yeah. I like that books like this exist that show you kind of different versions of the poses so that you know that it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but I guess the thing is, is like, if you're telling them, you know, put your hands on the ground and put your feet on the ground and you're not really making it to the ground today, um, that's tough. Do you think it's easy enough for children to follow it when you just tell them, like you put your Sure. Down here, no, children, children are so wise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you give them the instructions to do it, they will do it. They will do it. And I don't think that the caregiver is supposed to be an example model of yoga mm -hmm. either. So they shouldn't feel that pressure. The child has to do their own thing. You know, if they have teachers that they can use. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I haven't, we haven't said it um, out loud yet, but all these pictures are from Lisa Flynn's book, Yoga for Children. And you can check out other things about yoga from the library too. Um, do you have any other yoga resources that you would recommend to caregivers? I sent you a couple of, uh, one was a, a yoga for anxiety, because I have a um, friend whose child is having anxiety spells. And they got her into a yoga class, and this teacher was very, very wise and gave her a lot of relaxation techniques 
to the point that the child is not even medicated. Mm -hmm. Doing extremely well just with the breathing breathing techniques. Just like breathing uh, to anxiety or something like that. It's just very, very successful. Yeah, that is amazing. I've seen a lot of research out there about how yoga really does improve like brain functioning for young children, even if they're going through traumatic events. Um, it really, it really acts as a strong uh, resource to draw on. So um, there's I wouldn't yeah. say that it's magic, but it has a touch of magic <laughs> when they follow the poses, when they listen to the instructions, when they are motivated to work on their issues. I could see the example in this little girl because she was really having panic attacks and she was only 10 years old. Mm -hmm. And now she's on no medication and she's going to school to the regular classroom. She goes to yoga twice a week. Wow. That's great. She's had it integrated like that. Um, I just got the list of some of the other recommendations of books you had sent us. So it's Yoga is for Everybody by Kristen McGee. Mm -hmm. Good Night Yoga, a pose by pose bedtime story by Miriam Gates. Right. And then two websites, um, yoga for classrooms.com with the four is the number four, yoga for classrooms.com, and then childlightyoga.com. What do you like about the websites? What, what I found was that they are very realistic. When I was going through the internet, I found a lot of issues that I wasn't happy about, like the, the name of the poses and the, the completely made up poses and very unrealistic for children to do. Mm -hmm. I had one sign and I opened and they had an octopus pose. <laughs> How would you think about being an octopus and practicing yoga? <laughs> we do not have eight appendages. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> There's a lot out there that doesn't make any sense. And there was also a yoga, an older, uh, an adult uh, woman teaching yoga poses for children. That really didn't do much for me. <laughs> All right, one more question for you. Um, when you have a really wiggly child, that doesn't want to stop moving. How do you get them to settle into a pose? And how do you get them to be a little bit more mindful? Well, those are really challenging children. You have to do a one-to-one one -one type of setting, type of class. And then this is what we're going to do. And I will show you what you have to do. And you have to put your hand here and your other hand here and your foot here and your other foot here. So it's a one to one that you have to do with that type of child. Otherwise, you don't go any place with them. All right. That one on one attention can really make a kid feel special, too. So, and that's really a good thing for the caregivers, too. Well, I think if you want to wrap up, we can. Is there anything else that you would like to share with us before we say goodbye tonight? Well, you asked me about the most difficult case uh -huh. that I ever had. Mm -hmm. so when I was in Ann Arbor, I did also uh, chair yoga for the cognitively impaired population. Um, I was very naive because I really didn't know what I was getting into. Some of these people have been either in nursing homes or group homes, and they couldn't even stretch their arms. Mm -hmm. They were very stiff people. 
they, were, they wouldn't communicate, they wouldn't talk to you. So the class was pretty much given with uh, a lot of imagination. I used uh, ties from the Salvation Army because I didn't have yoga straps. And I give the, each one of the uh, patients one, one tie and ask them to stretch out that tie. So at the beginning, they couldn't do it. And it took probably weeks until they were able to know what the ties were for. Like a and necktie. Necktie, yeah. A necktie, instead, wow. Instead of the strap, I didn't have straps. They didn't have money to buy straps. So I went to Salvation Army and I got the ties from me. And they began to use them. And it was amazing what happened with those ties because they began to develop ownership of the ties. They wanted, some of them wanted the red tie. Some of them wanted the one with the happy faces. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when the program was cut, you know, I, I trained the nurses and was going to stay with them because I knew that they couldn't, they couldn't afford me. So I, you know, I just trained them and they continue the program. Mm -hmm. Very, that was a big challenge because one of those days you said, what am I going to do? You know, and you have to just develop the best you can the best skills you can you know to communicate with them because they needed you they needed the experience mm -hmm. I, remember, I have vivid images of those experiences <laughs> that's amazing it's so important to get people of all ages moving and yeah ownership of ties i could see that i could see that they they always um well, the toddlers that in my classes always find a way to make like this the scarf choice a big sure. deal, like purple scarf, green scarf. It seems it seems normal to to take either to me, but it's important. It's important to have the choice. <laughs> All right. So that's it for tonight. Thank you again, Nidia, for teaching us all about yoga for young children and sharing your knowledge and expertise with us. Um, we will be having you back for our Spanish language one next week. So we're excited to have that one and um, take care everybody. Okay. Have a good night. Good night.